Could you show me more of like how you would evaluate, you know, a specific ticker, if you will, of like what you're looking for, what's important to you? Yep. So let's, uh, we were talking about the broken slot machines recently and I brought up the Chinese stocks again. Yep. So we're going to take XPEV. Um, so why am I choosing XPEV out of all the stocks? Uh, because really this stock on the daily chart has just been absolutely wrecked. And I mean, we're coming from a high of 55 and most recently, um, back in June, we were at 35 bucks and we're just straight line with zero bounces. Mm -hmm. And so if I were to compare that to stuff like, like, uh, like Neo, um, that really held up much, much better. And it's not as beaten down, right? We went from 20 to 10, uh, kind of recently. LI is a little bit more interesting where we go from about 40 to 15. Yep. Um, but, but really the most dramatic is, is kind of like this $35 move down, down to six. Um, and so just massive downtrend overall on this daily. Right. And so a lot of people are looking for when the bottom might be in. And so as I discussed over the weekend was that big news about President Xi kind of consolidating power spooked a lot of people. Um, and so yesterday, some of these stocks were down 20% or so. Yeah. Um, I mean, the whole index was just getting wrecked. And so what we find is yesterday on the intraday, <clears throat> XPEV had sold off quite aggressively. We kind of put a bottom in around there. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is on the daily, right, which has been downtrend, 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 we now had our biggest volume mm. capitulation, right? So we did uh, 60 million shares yesterday. So that is a ton of volume, um, you know, easily 2x or more of some of those prior days, which is probably a rough heuristic of like what I want to see. And so what was interesting is despite the sell-off, uh, the stocks really came back later in the day, right? The whole afternoon we held up. Uh, we're holding above this pink line, which is just, just a rough VWAP guide. And so on such a strong close like that, that made me a little interesting, right? Like price was a massive puke out. Um, volume was incredible. Yep. And then we start to firm up. So any break of that prior day highs or even call it like 720 or so would probably get me interested. Yep. And <clears throat> sure enough, we did break that pre-market. Like a lot of these stocks were, were indicating higher. Um, like the market was up, bonds were bouncing, uh, supportive Chinese news came out overnight that, that, that they're going to be ordering their traders to support, support the market. So that would make me interested in this stock, either for an intraday trade above, say, the 720 level, where we yep. did hold there since pre-market, um, or even if you're doing a swing trade, what you might want to do is, is you know, buy sometime today now that we broke kind of the prior bar highs and then give it to prior bar lows. Yep. So maybe I'd, I'd be buying in this, the 720s and give it to uh, 625 yep. and then run a trailing stop uh, of, of prior day lows as, as we bounce or something like that. Or maybe I'll just, you know, given how beaten down this is, right? Like the, the risk reward is so asymmetric at this point because just a couple months ago, right? Even just a couple weeks ago, we were in the teens, well, yeah. you know, and, and then a couple months ago, we're in the twenties. There's only so many points you can lose when the stock's at, at six bucks, right? Like, right. again, this isn't just going bankrupt magically overnight. Um, and so what that does is that leaves like a very asymmetric uh, risk reward for you to make some type of swing bounce or even an intraday bounce. And so, yeah, that's how I'd start to think about this is, is you know, many ways to structure an intraday, but I guess the simplest to me is just kind of using that roughly 720 level from the prior day, yep. um, long above and hoping we get some continuation after such capitulation. I have a question. If you, if you zoom into this, like this from here to here, yep. and, and you know, and keep so, in mind, this is all just, uh, this is pre after hours and pre-market. Yep. So, you know, it starts off above, you know, pre-market, we're already above 720, right? And so let's just say you want to buy anywhere in this section. Are you, uh, what's your ideal like scenario, what you would like to see if it did dip, that you will keep you confident to stay in that play? <clears throat> yep. So I guess given this chart pattern, I'll even zoom in a bit on the daily. Mm -hmm. There's there's probably only one of two ways I want to structure it. Yep. So first, and again, this is just me, zillion ways to do it. Sure. But so first using, call it 720, yep. I would want to be long against that level. So maybe I get long in the pre-market, maybe I get long in the 730s off the open and, and do a stop of 720. Gotcha. Um, because a lot of technical analysis, it's, it's not just um, 
it's not just that these patterns can have predictive ability, but it's also that these patterns allow you to structure a trade with the logical set stop. And right, so if we go back into the prior day highs, now it's not as strong as I'm thinking. So that doesn't mean it's not gonna bounce, but it just means I need that as an initial stop. So for that one specific way of setting up this trade, mm -hmm. I'd stop out at 720. Then the other thing that interests me is if we are weak uh, and break back below 720, um, what I would be interested in is if we eat into this, this prior day bar. Mm -hmm. Given this volume was so capitulatory and so incredible, I'd be really interested in building up a position against the 625 lows. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't want to buy like 718, I don't want to buy 710, I, I probably don't want to buy even seven bucks. But if we get back to say, I don't know, six, 660s, 650s, I'd probably start to build into a position to give it against 625 and set that up as, as a daily swing. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I would just be using a daily stop and, yeah. and try and get ideally what would be a higher low here. You yeah. know, because just with the thought, so much capitulation, so much panic, people have digested the news, we bounced strong, we broke the prior day highs. So then if we go into that range, it's, you know, a lot of people are probably scared, but it's probably just just that, that lower high fake out yep. and accumulating against those lows to then do a multi-day swing higher. I want to take this time to say thank you to our sponsor, Cobra Trading. Cobra Trading is the go-to broker for day traders and short sellers. And I'm not the only one saying this. In fact, Benzinga awarded Cobra Trading as the go-to broker for short selling. They have a heavy focus on direct market access order routing, so you have the fastest execution. They have some of the best locate prices and availability. They also have amazing customer service. I've experienced many different brokers, and it's why I use them every single day and why I'm proud to have them as our sponsor. Sign up now by clicking the Be The Trader referral link below and earn one free month of software with Cobra and 25% off all commissions. Now let's get back to the show. Even in this case, like there's multiple ways, like there's, there's an intraday play and you know, 720, you know, a lot of people are thinking like, I do risk like the prior highs, but like I get faked out all the time, break 719 and then go straight up to 770. How do you view that? Like if that would have stopped you out and went to 719 and spike, like how would you view that? Um, it, would, it, just, it just happens. And I would say a lot of people get faked out all the time because they're not using real levels and they're falling for noise, right? And we had discussed that before. And like, if, if you have a real level, like yeah. that level should get an emotional reaction. Like every, I want every trader that I can get ideally all just buying that level and all this volume coming in. I want hedge funds, institutions, banks, you know, retail traders, everyone just buying that because it's just so one-sided, right? Mm -hmm. And so like what a lot of people will do is they'll take something that's probably totally noise. Yeah. Like using, using this intraday chart, yep. you know, like if, if I were to say, oh, you know, 760 is a level. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's really, it's really not right. We're above, below, we're above, below, right. above, below. True. Like if it's a true level, you're not going above, below, above, below. Right. Um, a true level is super, super clear. Like if, if ideally I can show any, like any trader of yep. any technical analysis background and they're going to say, oh wow, like that's a real level. Like what would be interesting to me is like, you know, at least today in XPEV, like 770 is kind of set up where that's kind of the highs of the days. Correct. So like, okay, that's that's a little resistance level. Not not necessarily the best one yet. Right. Um, but that's at least something I'm watching. Um, and so if if you find yourself constantly buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, yes. buy, sell, because it's above, below, above, below, like it's just not a meaningful level, right? And like, so if this were to break 770 and I buy and it goes back below, okay, like, didn't work, whatever, I'm not just gonna keep going back and forth, right? Like, I'm just not gonna keep trying it. Um, and I think a lot of people fall for that. And, and especially, right, if, if you just keep going back and keep going back and doing it again and again, mm -hmm. like, especially if you're someone that doesn't have edge and you're just trading noise, that's how you ruin yourself. Gotcha, gotcha. So like, even this level, even though it's, it's a key level, it's obvious, we can see that here at 720. If, so you would play that as a 720 got barely breached by a penny, you'd be getting out. Or would you be, how would you view that? I'm just very curious. I mean, if. Like if you just, if it's that strict probably, or if it's more of like a feel. Or I mean, it's, it's, there's always a little bit art versus, versus science. Like yeah. if, if, if we're just slowly grinding down and like, if we're just slowly grinding down and we break the level and we're showing just, just steady weakness, 
Um, I'd probably be getting out like 719, 718 yep. if I can. Um, but if it's like a, you know, panic. let's, let's say there was just like a super quick blip, right? Or like, let's just say there was just one offer that, that came low and it was just, you know, the stocks at 760 and one bozo mm. came low to like 718. Yep. Just cause one bozo came low. Like that doesn't mean I'm then going like, to, you know, get yep. out. Gotcha. Um, so there is a little bit of an, of a art to it. Um, but, but for the most part, I do tend to be decently strict about it. Yep. And then like, look, if it doesn't. Like, so here's the thing is if you're playing the best trades and if you're playing the best setups with edge, when, when a trade's working, it should just be gone. And I had this debate on, on Twitter and it's like, so many people are like, oh, my best trades are the ones that, you know, like I only, they only buy when it comes back, right? Oh, the, the, the trade was working and it came back. Now it's giving the chance to buy. And it's like, dude, like by definition, you're Very missing. Moved you're missing the best setups, right? The best trades, the best trades are the ones where they break the level and they're gone forever. So if you're only buying the ones that then come back to the level, you're self-selecting for the ones that are showing weakness, right? So you're, all my aces that are just gone and I make the most money on, you're not even looking at those. Then all my like, you know, Bs and Cs where it's like, ah, oh, crap, this, you know, it's, I don't know if this is any so good anymore. It's coming back. Like it shouldn't really even be testing this. Yep. Like you're buying my B's and C's. Mm-hmm. You know, when it's like, if, if you do that to your trading and you cut off all the best trades, you're just so, you're just, just in such a tough position at that point. Man, and okay. like the, the best, the best trades immediately go in your favor, right? Like think about this. What do every trader, and this is all about building a system, right? What do the best trades do? What do the worst trades do? The best trades, they immediately work in your favor. They have no pullbacks or very shallow pullbacks, right? Right? Because what, what's happening? It's working mm-hmm. and we're not pulling back because so many other people want to buy this stock, mm-hmm. right? If it even dips a couple pennies, people are like, oh shit, I need to be in this, right? If that stock is pulling all the way in having these deep pullbacks, that's not a sign of strength, right? And so the worst setups are the ones that can't go at all, right? So people will wait for things to kind of just sit there or whatever and wait, yes. wait, wait. And it's like, dude, like, there's no oomph to this. Like, you know, if this was so good, if this was such a great level, it would just be gone. And so the ones that just sit there go above, below, above, below, like, or, or like have these steep pullbacks. Yep. So many people are like, oh, that's what I look for. And it's like, you're, you're self-selecting for qualities that are showing weakness, mm. right? And like when you do that, you're just ruining your odds. Would you say that mostly applies to big caps or because small caps, I feel like Anything. they always do that, Price, though, right? No. Like, there's a lot of volatility where it's like wicks, wicks. Like, um, you know what I'm saying? I, mean, I would disagree. Okay. I would say the best setups or the best setups are the best setups. I don't care if it's futures. I don't care if it's not gas, oil. I don't care if it's 30 year treasuries. I don't care if it's small caps, low float. Uh, mega cap. It doesn't okay. matter. Cool. Anything that's in play, the best setups will just be gone, right? I mean, think about like, I don't know if I'll be able to think of any great ones just right, right on the spot. But um, you know, like let's let's take Tesla. I don't know if I can even pull up this chart far enough right now. Um, let's see. Like Tesla breaking, well, this, I mean, it did the reverse split, but uh, so call it the 300 level, right? Yep. When this broke, it, it kind of had an earnings catalyst, right? Yep. Next day, we kind of gap up, it gets some upgrades, and it's gone, right? Yeah, it just I mean, now think about it. Tesla is one of, this was one of the biggest stocks in the market. Tesla went 50% in a straight line. It, yep. it, it was gone, right? That's not, that's not a small cap stock. This is the sure. biggest stock, but this was an incredible setup, right? What happened was you have this massive level on a like long-term chart. Too. You have, right? You have a massive level. You have high short interest. You have a Mimi stock. You have a news catalyst. Um, mm-hmm. All-time highs breakout. You have analysts that are then going to need to catch up and upgrade it. You have people YOLOing back then into leaps. So this was an A plus incredible setup mm. and it took off like a rocket, Yep. right? And so I really try to only find like, what are the things that will just take off like an absolute rocket? And you know, like even, even I wrote up, I wrote up a trade from earlier this year um, in MSTR. Let me go back to say just like a, 
one year daily chart mm -hmm. where it was on this day, um, this is what, May 12th, when Bitcoin had been panicking, but, but MSTR had been hugely divergent from, from Bitcoin and panicking way too far. Okay. And when this reversed, this reversed like, like a rocket. It just went up in a straight line. And it's going to be hard for me to pull up that intraday yeah. on the spot. But it pretty much turned and it went from, you know, high 130s pretty much to like, yeah, there were some pullbacks, but it, it did one leg. We had a pullback. Then that next pullback, I think it went from like 150 to like 200 or something. You know, and even, um, so I guess my, my point is, is like, you want the moves to happen. Like, it, like it's going to be the best trades as you re recapping is when you enter the trade, they should work pretty quickly. Yep. And so that raises the most, probably the most important question, right? Like, cause people are going to say, oh, but like, you know, like there's no way before the trade to know which ones are going to do that. And it's like, it's like, that's the same as saying like in, in poker, you don't, oh, but Lance, there's, there's no way in poker to know which hand's going to win. In which it's like, yeah, like, of course not. Like, no shit. This is a game of uncertainty. If you knew, yeah. you would just bet infinity on everything. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, what I can tell you is, I can tell you there's certain qualities that are going to make it, it more probable, right? Mm. I can tell you if I have aces going, going, going into um, the flop, Right, I can I can tell you that the probability of this being a good hand for me is way way higher. I can get busted on two seven or something dumb, right? I'm yep, not saying sure. you know anything, right? But you're stacking the odds in your favor with certain variables. Mm. If there's if there's an aggressive better, right? That's that's playing every single hand, and I have I have I have aces, and I, I catch like a super super strong hand, and this guy's betting 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 betting. I can tell you there's a really really high probability that I am gonna you know. Just, just take this guy yeah, to clean it, yeah, right? Exactly. And it, look, if this guy's betting aggressive every single hand and, and calling, 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 raising or whatever, yeah, he might have got some magical hand that's sure. going to beat me. But I'm just saying, like, the odds are in your yeah, favor. it's it's not a matter of knowing in every any given instance, but you're just stacking the odds. And so I can tell you that, like, in the really good setups like that Tesla, the odds of that taking off like a rocket and going really, really far are really, really good. And in something like the MSTR panic, or even you want to take another great one, was, was Alibaba earlier in the year. I know so many traders that crushed that March, um, that March panic, right? Because you have these mega cap stocks pretty much. Alibaba went from 100 to like low 70s in a matter of days. Yep. Right? A quarter of its market cap gone. And yeah, there was news overnight that led to that massive bounce. But you're positioning where that pendulum's already so far that when you get that news, it's just rocket fuel, mm. right? Yep. And so, yeah, you, of course, don't know that's going to happen. Um, but, like, you're putting yourself in the position to, to win big. 100%. Well, Lance, man, look, I already know. Everyone, you need to rewind this. Watch it again. Send it to your friends because you're getting a ton of gold here. Basically, a master class is happening right now. So, Lance, if they have more questions about you, I, I want him to take a second and tell you where to find him and also tell you about his awesome charity. And you want to give back, you definitely want to give back to this. So, to go ahead and give, let them know. Yeah, and to wrap up that topic real quick, I would say just like find the trades that do take off like a rocket and try to reverse engineer why. What are the variables and work that into your system. And yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at the one Lance B, all spelled out. Then I also run a nonprofit in my spare time. We host competitions at universities to try to turn students into volunteers and socially minded individuals and more uh, just conscious of the nonprofit world around them. Uh, if you're ever interested in checking that out, impactcompetition.org or impact underscore compete on Twitter. So give me some follows and uh, appreciate all the audience. Thank you. Awesome, guys. Thank you again, Lance.